Καλωσορίσατε σε ένα ακόμη Game Time, ένα πολύ ιδιαίτερο Game Time, με έναν καλεσμένο παγκοσμίου κλάση, τον David Coulthard, έναν από τους πιο διάσημους οδηγούς της Φόρμουλα 1, ο οποίος μας κάνει την τιμή να είναι εδώ σήμερα μαζί μας και να μας μιλήσει για έναν ιδιαίτερο σκοπό, για έναν μεγάλο σκοπό που έχει θέσει ως στόχο και αφορά στις γυναίκες. Πάμε να τον υποδεχτούμε. Ladies and gentlemen, it's David Coulthard here with us at Game Time. We have a great honor. Welcome, David. Thank you very much. What brings you here uh, in Greece at OPAP Game Time? Well, I've been here in, in Greece actually because uh, Alwyn have a, a conference and uh, they have uh, become an official partner of an initiative that I'm part of called More Than Equal, which is uh, a, a goal of finding the first female Formula One world champion. Now, we're very familiar with having male world champions, but there's of the almost 500 competitors in Formula One over the duration of uh, competition from 1950. There's only been five women that competed. And uh, what's the level uh, of them, of the women drivers? Well, I believe the, the level of uh, female drivers have the potential to be as good as the male drivers, but we just haven't had enough young girls coming into karting mm -hmm. to have had the numbers then find their way through to the highest level. Your motto at the initiative is, it is a matter of when, not if. When is this when? <laughs> well, of course. Is it that's, close? Uh, well, it, it could be. There could be some uh, incredible talent that's just about to break onto the, the car racing scene. But the reality is, I think it's going to take several years uh, because we need to find someone uh, eight, nine, ten years old in karting and give them the Lewis Hamilton or the Max Verstappen treatment. They have to have the same level of training support, you know, psychological support, financial support to make sure they're driving the right cars and that way they have the best opportunity to develop their skills. Talk to us about uh, F1, uh, the years you used uh, to be a protagonist and uh, these years. How have things changed? Well, I think that uh, the technology, of course, has moved forward. Uh, we have hybrid Formula One cars today. When I was racing, they were just normally aspirated. Uh, they're, they're very uh, fuel efficient. Uh, the most fuel efficient engines in anywhere in the world. So I think the technology that's being developed is relevant to the road cars that we drive in the future. And I would like to say the drivers are better than in the time I was racing, because I think that every generation should be better in some way. And I think that the standard in Formula One at the moment is incredibly high. You've got Lewis Hamilton as a seven time world champion. You've got Max Verstappen about to win his second title. You have Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, George Russell, Lando Norris. The list goes on. All of these are brilliant young drivers. You mentioned some names from all the dec decades, from uh, all the periods that uh, Formula uh, One exists. Who would you say is the best of the best Driver. Well, it'll always be a matter of opinion, of course. Of course, but we something. want your opinion My, since we have yeah. the honor to have you here. So, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to work with three world champions when I was a young test driver. So, Nigel Mansell, Alain Prost, and Ayrton Senna. I think Ayrton Senna has to be considered one of the greatest drivers in the history of the sport. Sadly, he passed away uh, in the San Marino Grand Prix in 1994, but he raised the level, I think, of Uh, what a Formula One driver could achieve at that time. So in my mind, he has to be considered one of the true greats. So you were lucky or unlucky to have them at the same period with you? Well, I, I think uh, I wanted to compete at the highest level, mm -hmm. which was Formula One, and I wanted to discover how good could I be. You know, of course I wanted to win, but I, I didn't want to win against average competition. I wanted to win against the best competition. So uh, racing against Schumacher and Hakkinen and Hamilton and all these guys, then I found out that I could be competitive and mm -hmm. I could win some races, but I never managed to convert the championship. But I don't lose any sleep over that because I tried my best. I always gave 100% and the journey of uh, discovery in Formula One is an amazing journey. Let me take you to the Singapore uh, Grand Prix that is uh, coming up. Uh, what uh, do you expect to see there? I'm really curious actually, because if you look at the season as a whole, there's been some circuits that have been Ferrari dominant in qualifying, some circuits where Red Bull have been incredibly strong, and then we've even seen Mercedes in the last couple of races start to show some good form, and George Russell was in pole position in Budapest. So a street circuit like Singapore, a very fast street circuit, quite different to Monte Carlo, who's going to be good there? You know, in theory, the longer straight should be for Red Bull, but 
actually Ferrari have shown really good pace on, let's say, slow, medium uh, corners. Uh, Mercedes, though, maybe if the temperature is in the right window, then they can be at the front and maybe they get their first victory. So I'm basically giving you three options. Yes, uh, there are my, too many. <laughs> my, gut feeling, my gut feeling is uh, that uh, maybe Ferrari in the qualifying, but Red Bull in the race because of their underlying strategy and pace. But I think for a great season of racing, it would be amazing if Mercedes were to come through and get a win. So, uh, we are going to see that, what is going to happen. I will take you to a video we saw recently, a viral video with Tom Cruise, with you and him at the yeah. dogfight. Is he good? Yeah, Tom is annoyingly good at everything. Really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you follow any other sports? Because here you, we do football, we do basketball, we do everything. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm aware of other sports, but mm -hmm. I have dedicated my life to racing and today I still work in television and when I'm not doing that I'm with my son at the kart track. So I don't really have the time to go to other sports. I'm invited this weekend to go and watch the Laver Cup tennis event in London um, and that's very nice to go and see something like that but I'm not following very closely other sports. Do you sports. support any team? Well of course as a Scotsman uh, mm -hmm. I'm always supporting Scotland when they're, they're competing. Uh, and you may or may not be aware that within the United Kingdom, there's a, a lot of rivalry between England and Scotland. So I will take you to Nations League because Scotland plays with Ireland on Saturday. I want you to tell me who's going to win. O obviously, we know who you will say, but it's for a good reason. I want to hear it from you. Okay, well, look, of course, I think Scotland are going to win. Uh, Ireland are, let's say, our friends. Uh, and, uh, but so we'll be nice to them and we'll win 1-0. Let me explain what's the good reason in uh, Greek. Εννοείται ότι εσείς το γνωρίζετε ότι οι 178 αθλητικές ακαδημίες του ΟΠΑΠ θα ενισχυθούν ακόμη περισσότερο σε αθλητικό εξοπλισμό αν ο Ντέιβιτ Κούθαρτ πέσει μέσα σε αυτό που πιστεύει στη νίκη της Σκοτίας προφανώς. We have a couple of questions uh, sent by our viewers. Uh, they want to know if you prefer a dry or a wet track. Depending on the qualifying, if I'm at the front, I prefer to be dry because then you, you can really exploit that. If I've had a bad qualifying, wet is always opportunity because then people make mistakes uh, and I was able to, to win uh, a couple of races in Formula One in the wet. One more question from our viewers. Uh, what is the most memorable moment from your career? <laughs> uh, well, of course, winning is the goal. Uh, I was very lucky to, to win what I considered the classic races. So the British Grand Prix, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix, the Italian Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, you know, circuits that have been on the calendar for a long time. So if I had to pick one, I would say the Monaco race because it's such a crazy place to drive a Grand Prix car. One question from me, uh, I mean from me, can you take me for a drive? Oh, it would be a great pleasure actually. <laughs> the only thing is I only have a one, a one seat in my car. So. Okay, I will fasten my seat belt okay. anyway. <laughs> David, thank you so much thank for you. being here. It's a really great honor. Good luck to thank the you. initiative you are driving. Thank you. And I uh, hope to see you again uh, in Greece. Absolutely, I might never leave. Good. I might just stay here. <laughs> thank you. Αυτό ήταν ο Ντέιβιτ Κούλθαρντ εδώ στο Pub Game Time. Ελπίζουμε να απολαύσατε αυτή τη συζήτηση όσο και εμείς. Ραντεβού την επόμενη εβδομάδα. Γεια σας.